Kicking us off on the subject of corporate reference data management, we have joining us now Wilhelm van Gemert, who is Deputy Head of Unit, the Data and Format Standardization Services at the Publications Office of the European Union, and Max Deckers, who is an independent information professional. Gentlemen, over to you for your presentation and remind the audience, please keep sending in those questions. Hello, thank you very much for uh, having us here. We are actually, we have presented uh, this uh, topic uh, two years ago in the first Endorse uh, conference, and we would like to give you an update on where we are. So with Max uh, and uh, the colleagues, we are working on reference data management in the uh, commission. And so let me uh, take you to the... <clears throat> So, just as a reminder for the uh, European Commission, it's part of the executive of the European Union. There are 55 uh, directors, directorates uh, general, uh, different services that are uh, working on specific policy areas, around 30,000, 30, more than 30,000 permanent uh, uh, and other stuff, and we are distributed over multiple sites. So the Publications Office is one of these uh, services and we are providing services not only to the Commission but also to the other uh, EU institutions. So you can imagine with so many uh, services that are also different uh, uh, IT system, each IT system making use of reference data such as code lists, taxonomies, uh, etc. And so the aim of the work that we have been doing was to, first of all, identify what kind of reference data are there in the Commission and that can be identified, uh, become visible and reused. And so not only identify the reference data, but then also develop a common approach on managing this reference data and to support this through a governance on uh, corporate commission um, level and then make sure that this metadata is also interoperable. And so for this purpose, we developed a policy. And so there is a link you see at the bottom of the page uh, to the EU vocabulary website where you can find the, the policy. So since our last presentation in uh, the, the previous Endorse uh, conference, we worked on amongst other updating the policy. So we had last year a new version of the policy uh, published. And we also worked on the process of identifying and refining the identification and development of reference data that had the vocation and the, 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 uh, the, the potential of becoming relevant on uh, corporate level. So we worked, for instance, on a more inclusive uh, list of uh, gender and sex, which is uh, still under evaluation. And we worked on the list of countries and territories in the geospatial reference data domain. And so in this context, I think it's interesting to, to, to know that we identified that there are more than 70 lists circulate, code lists circulating in uh, the institutions. And so the aim is to come to a corporate common list of uh, countries and territories with, of course, the, 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 the logical efficiency gains and data quality improvements that uh, go uh, hand in hand. And so I give the floor now to Max, who will say a bit more about the governance guidelines and the best practices that we have been uh, working on. Max. Okay, thank you, Willem. Uh, I'm uh, Max, uh, Max Deckers. I work with uh, Willem and the team on this, uh, on this policy and on the practical implementation of that. And one of the things that we found uh, necessary is to look at how these uh, reference data assets are governed. So what happens with those uh, assets? And we have identified three main phases that we wanted to look at. Uh, that's the creation, so a new uh, uh, asset or uh, the selection of an existing one as a corporate asset. Uh, the second part is an evolution. So uh, we know that uh, reference data assets, although they don't change that often, uh, there are changes that are requested by the users or that are uh, necessary because of environmental changes. Uh, 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 and the third part that we are looking at is the retirement of assets. Uh, in particular, uh, one case is, uh, for example, if there is now a, a corporate list of countries and territories uh, that would replace the 72 lists that uh, Willem mentioned, uh, there is a uh, an activity that needs to be done to actually move from an, the old list to the new list. 
So those are the three phases that we see in uh, the, the governance. And there is a horizontal one, uh, which is the communication notification that is necessary to keep all the stakeholders informed and making sure that people know what is going on. This is still work in progress. We have uh, the, uh, just the previous one uh, still, uh, the, uh, we have a draft uh, guideline for, for governance, uh, but we're currently uh, evaluating that with a couple of uh, director generals and services. Uh, we're looking at what is written now in the draft guidelines actually makes sense in a practical sense. That's one part. The second part in the next slide is that we've also been working on best practices. Uh, we did that already uh, before the uh, the presentation that we did in 2021, but we're also working further on uh, these things. And I wanted to just highlight three things that I think are uh, very important uh, for the work that we're doing. Uh, one is the persistent identifiers. So being able to refer to uh, the assets and the concepts within the assets uh, by persistent identifiers so that over time you know uh, what it is and you know you're able to find what those things mean. Uh, another thing is the multilingual information, of course, in the context of the European Commission, uh, usually uh, there is an obligation or at least the willingness to provide information in all the official languages of the EU. So that's also something that we have a best practice to describe how to do that and, uh, and how to publish that. And one thing that we've also been working on is the metadata. On the right-hand side, you see that we have metadata to describe assets and also metadata to describe individual concepts within the assets. And the idea there is also uh, one of the things that Willem said earlier, make things discoverable so that uh, integration with the EC data catalog, which is being uh, developed, and also with the uh, European Open Data Portal data.europa.eu, so that those things that are being used within the Commission uh, can also be uh, reused uh, uh, by others. And that is something that the description of those things we feel is, is quite important. Willem, do you want to talk about the lessons? <laughs> Yes, uh, thank you very much, uh, Max. So, indeed, I think last time we ended with our lessons learned, and I think these lessons are still valid. I've highlighted here some points. I will not go into them, but uh, I think if I go to one, I think what is really key is to have a group of real practitioners uh, working together, and of course, to have a sponsor, uh, a sponsor that supports. Uh, uh, the work. I wanted to add actually some of the uh, to 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 highlight some other things that we learned in the last uh, two years. I think first of all, what was really important was this having a common vocabulary to have a common terminology. And because there are different terms used in different domains, it's really important. And I think we, I, I was very happy to see that that we ended up with uh, working with the term reference data. And I'm very happy to see that this is also used in uh, frameworks such as the uh, Dama Data Management uh, Book of Knowledge, which is in a way um, allows you not only to have a common language inside your organization, but also allows to communicate with uh, others uh, in the uh, the outside uh, uh, world. Uh, and then there is this whole, uh, yeah, working together, raising awareness and raising uh, through this, the maturity level around reference data management in the organization. And this goes also with the, uh, the resources part in, in developing skills through training. I mean, I think we uh, consider it logical that for certain jobs, you would uh, need to follow a training. Well, if you are to become a data steward, it's also, uh, it, it, it's also uh, logical that you have to follow uh, certain uh, trainings that you maybe have to learn about semantic uh, technologies to have to uh, use uh, certain tools, uh, etc. I think another important uh, process that or another part that we have in a way seen confirmed was the idea of of starting small and focusing very much on the process first and then uh, expanding this. And so through this. Uh, Iterations, we have refined the, uh, the the process and we every time discover uh, new things. For instance, in the last time we last uh, working on the countries and territories, we discovered that 
it would be good to have from the beginning clear who is going to be really the lead, the data owner, because that will also, this service will logically also be the driver behind, uh, behind the discussions and the standardization. And then in this discussion, it's really important to have different professions uh, present. Business, of course, domain knowledge, also data expertise and uh, technical IT um, uh, experts. So I will be happy, but I look at the time. So I propose that we move to the next uh, points uh, that uh, the next points that we uh, are working on. Uh, I give the floor again to Max. Okay, yeah, so as Willem said, uh, we have uh, done quite a, a lot of things. We have uh, gained a lot of experience. Uh, we have good progress, we think, but there's still much to do. So what we currently have on our list of things to do is, as I said earlier, in the governance guidelines, we're evaluating them and we're hoping to get uh, out of that evaluation a checklist for uh, data for reference data governance, uh, both on the corporate level, but also on the local level. We're working uh, currently on this uh, country and territory list, and there are many things in the geospatial area that also need to be uh, considered and could also be very useful for uh, for corporate use. Uh, the NUTS, uh, the local administrative units, are two things that have been mentioned already. Uh, we, we, win we want to extend the list of corporate reference data assets, and we're keeping an eye on things that are uh, used uh, very th uh, extensively throughout the commission uh, and we're uh, hoping that in the next year or two we'll be able to uh, continue on adding uh, corporate assets to to the list and also uh, it's probably a, a good idea and we have already had some requests from other EU institutions for example the parliament to also uh, 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 use these kinds of guidelines and best practices for their uh, reference data management. And I think that's a good idea that it's sort of a uh, something that is growing uh, through, through the commission and all beyond the commission. And uh, we're going to be busy with that in the next uh, year or so. Thank you. This is uh, what we had to say. Okay. And we're taking questions if you have any. Well, thank you very much, gentlemen. Um, there's just a couple of quick questions that I'm sure you can deal with. Firstly, uh, is the process around the lists uh, public? Where can we send people to find out more information? We are still refining the process, but indeed the yeah. idea is to have everything uh, public. So we will publish everything on the EU Vocabularies uh, website. There is a, uh, in the link that you will find in the uh, presentation, there is the, um, uh, the, the, the a dedicated page to the policy where you can find also uh, the different uh, documents. And so we are still working on the uh, the governance guidelines that uh, Max uh, referred to. They are in draft and uh, the aim is to, to have everything available on the EU Vocabularies website. Okay, quickly another one. Is this a collaboration with CEMIC? Someone is asking. CEMIC uh, is indirectly uh, participating, uh, involved. We have actually the group that we are working on is co-chaired by uh, uh, Seth van Holland, who uh, works for CEMIC. And indeed, the, the idea is to have uh, synergies with uh, CEMIC, because uh, I think what we are doing here is um, highly relevant as well for uh, public administrations and others in, uh, in member states. Uh, okay, and then just a last couple of questions, a little bit <laughs> more challenging than those easy ones. Um, where do I get unique identifiers for a new taxonomy? And another question is, what is the exact role of the data steward in the process? Uh, I don't know if one of you wants to take each of those uh, or who would like to answer those. I don't know, Max, if you want to say something about the unique yeah, identifiers. So for for pers persistent identifiers, uh, I think there there is, the, the good thing is that the uh, publications office has already started uh, some years ago of uh, uh, having a persistent identifier service. So if you have a taxonomy and you want to have a persistent URI, then the place to go is the publications office where they manage uh, URIs that fall under data.europa.eu. So that is something that you can do. Uh, of course, there are some rules about uh, uh, some criteria that the taxonomy needs to uh, satisfy, but that is something that you can find out uh, from the publications office. And Wilhelm, Wilhelm, do you want to tackle the data steward, exact role of the data steward? I know we're yeah, short of time, but... <laughs> yeah, 
I can uh, say, voila. So the idea of the data steward is that it's uh, somebody who really uh, is actually maintaining the reference data asset in question. So uh, it implies to have a certain have experience with managing uh, reference data. Ideally, also have some uh, domain knowledge, so knowledge about the domain, but this is not uh, indispensable. That can also come from uh, the data owner, so to be a collaboration. But so it's the person who actually is in charge of making sure uh, updating the reference data uh, in uh, in question. Well, thank you very much uh, to both of you both for the presentation and for clarifying those points. And thanks to the audience for the questions.